You're listening to Africa Weekday. Good afternoon and welcome to Africa Midday, listening to Channel Africa, broadcasting from an African perspective in Johannesburg. We're currently on Channel 802 on the DSTV Audio Bouquet. You're also tuning in on www.channelafrica.co.za. My name is Zikon Amiso. I'm in studio with Onel Nsinzi, Tracy Bumgarde and Neto Chamane. Channel Africa, bringing you the African perspective. Welcome back to Africa Midday. Hundreds of millions of women suffer from pelvic floor disorders globally, often in silence. A South African women's health specialist operating in the country's Limpopo province has emphasized the importance of seeking treatment for pelvic floor disorders, saying women should not suffer in silence. Dr. Dagalo Mwaba, the first black South African to have a super specialized in the field of uh, uro- urology, has uh, seen uh, firsthand how the disorders impact many women. Speaking during Women's Month, Mwaba says until now there has not been an integrated uh, service within the Limpopo province, which many patients uh, had to be referred to Johannesburg for treatment. He explains. So urogynecology, it deals with pelvic floor disorder, which include pelvic organ prolapse and also urinary incontinence and fecal incontinence. So the urogynecologists are trained to be able to deal with the issues with the bladder, with the uterus, and also with the rectum. So most of the times patients will present or come to us unable to control the urine, where before they get to the toilet, urine already come out before they reach to the toilet or when they sneeze and cough, urine coming out. Sometimes they will come and say they feel a bone in the vagina coming out, or a womb when they wipe, they can feel that there's a bone in the vagina. Sometimes with the bowel problems like constipation or fecal incontinence. So those are the most commonest issues we deal with as urogynecologists. What got you interested in the first place in this field of medicine? Yes. Initially, in, as a child, I actually saw the positive role model in my community were teachers, priests, and doctors. And for somehow I got interested in medicine purely because of the mentors in my life. You know, one of the big mentors who I still remember today is Dr. Mariwati, who was a general practitioner in our community around Valdezia. He had a big impact in my choosing this career because I would like to have that big impact as well in my community. And as a urogynecologist in Limpopo, it's not only for the people in Limpopo and even their surrounding provinces like um, Pumalanga, they do not have uh, urogynecologists as well, and also in Zimbabwe and Mozambique. So I feel like I'm strategically for patients who are coming from big rural areas in those areas will be able to benefit. Let's go back to pelvic floor disorders. Are these disorders life-threatening and what sort of impact can they have on those affected? Yes, thank you for the question. So, Elizabeth, so what happens is if you have a bulge coming out from the vagina, it then obstructs the passage of urine. As a result, sometimes you may struggle to pee or the bladder can be just too full and then it just leaks, like what we call an overflow incontinence. Like when the dam is too full because there is an obstruction, and then it just overflows from above. So it can result in people getting wet all the time. Like, and when people are wet and smelling of urine, they don't want to go and mix with people. And if you may actually decide not to go to work and not to go to church, and that quality of life becomes very problematic. The other thing is that people get depressed. So if they cannot go and to work, they cannot go to socialize, and that can result in anxiety and also depression. With depression, people can commit suicide. So there's a bigger picture of which are people who are suffering from this and it's not told because people don't come forward with it. You find a person has committed suicide because of depression, but where is the depression coming from, you don't know. So this kind of thing can result in that. Other than that, even family issues. When you have pelvic organ prolapse, you struggle with uh, sexuality. You know, you struggle with enjoying sexual intercourse and then can break marriages. So other than that is that when you are 
work, you want to prevent that by buying a lot of pets, and pets are very expensive. Adult medics as well are very expensive. People are spending more than a thousand then on a monthly basis to keep themselves dry. And the funny part of it is that the problem can be easily, easily, easily solved in the good hands, in people who have been trained. And what causes these disorders, doctor? Yes, that's a good question, Elizabeth. So there's no specific one cause, but we know that there are people who are much at risk than the others. So when you're a little bit older, above the age of 50, and when you had delivered normally or normal vaginal delivery, or multiple normal vaginal deliveries, or when you have an increased weight as well, so those actually increase your risk to have this. Or maybe when during deliveries they have used instrumental deliveries like forceps or, or a suction to take out the baby. Those are the things which will predispose you to have pelvic organ problems. And if your family, like your mother or your grandmother, had the same problem, you're likely to have the same problem. How has the management of pelvic disorders changed over the years? Yes, so this discipline is that uh, the pelvic organ prolapse and urinary incontinence and urogyne, it's a new discipline. Previously, when you have a pelvic organ prolapse, they would just take out the womb. But that does not fix the problem because the problem is the weakness in the pelvic floor. So if you take out the womb, the weakness is still there. So what has changed now is that we have artificial thing like a net, which we can use to strengthen the tissue in the pelvic floor. So what we call laparoscopic sacrocopopexy. With time, invention has come. It comes with some risk as well. That's why it needs to be done by the doctors who have been trained to do it. What is your vision for the facilities where you operate in the province in as far as comprehensive urogynecology treatment service is concerned? I've been blessed to be elected as an education committee member of an international urogynecology association and also for a South African urogynecology association. So in my province, like in the Bobo, my biggest dream is to be able to roll out this kind of a service to deep, deep, deep in rural areas, those areas where they are too far away from big centers like Cape Town and Jobek. And because I'm strategically in the northern part of South Africa, even the people from Zimbabwe, the people from Mozambique, I will be so happy if we can able to get to also reach them because we are actually at the border gate where they can be able to come and get that service. Our very passionate Dr. Dagala Mwaba, the gynecologist and obstetrician in South Africa. He was talking to Elizabeth Liddy, kind of course, educating us there around urogynecology. It's 21 minutes after one o'clock. This is Africa Midday.